the County of San Bernardino, California, is proud to support this program and encourages everyone to recycle, reduce, and reuse every day. I've got a question. What would we do without tires? Obviously, they're on every vehicle on the road, so there are a lot of them. More importantly, how do we get rid of them? curious, what would we do without tires? Hi there, I'm Joel Green, and welcome to Curiosity Quest Goes Green, the show that explores what you're curious about. Well, today our quest letter comes to us from Toby in the OC, and he wrote, Dear Joel, my teacher says you're not supposed to throw tires in the trash, so I'm curious, how do you get rid of them? Well, Toby, you can recycle tires, and we're out at the Mitsubishi Cement Corp in Southern California, and we're gonna learn one way that they do this. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest. So we've made our way up the snow into the mountains where I'm with David Ribb from Mitsubishi Cement Corp. How are you doing, David? Good morning, Joel. Good morning. Thanks for having us out here today. Appreciate it. Glad to do it. How do cement and recycling tires blend? <laughs> There's a lot of steps in manufacturing cement. And using tires is kind of the end of the story. So if you hold on a while, <laughs> let me get to that. Uh-oh, so you're asking me to be patient is what you're asking me to do. <laughs> I know, it's tough, but it, it, it is tough. <laughs> All right, so where do we start then? We're starting in the quarry. In order to make cement, you need a lot of raw materials. Our production is nearly two million tons of cement per year, so we have to take out of the ground about two and a half million tons of limestone to work with. And that's why we're here in the quarry where we have lots of limestone to take out of these hills. What is a quarry? A quarry is a place where you get rock and gems, possibly. I'm thinking a uh, sea area. Maybe some kind of thing they use for golf. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like something a horse runs through. I don't know. <laughs> some kind of duck or some kind of animal. A waterfall. Something in the engine of a truck. We're mining from the side of a mountain mm -hmm. and we're pulling rock off of the sides, not too deep, but off the face of the mountain where there were deposits, natural deposits of limestone. That limestone was laid down millions of years ago when it was at the bottom of a seabed. Huh. Tiny creatures dropped their shells layer upon layer, hundreds of feet thick, and that formed the limestone. Then that seabed had to be raised up into a mountain range by geologic movement and now is along this mountain ridge. And it's a very rich deposit and there are several companies mining the limestone here. This quarry has been open since the 1940s and was originally a Kaiser steel uh, limestone source mm -hmm. and then Kaiser uh, opened a cement plant and Mitsubishi bought it in 1988. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Concrete is the second most widely consumed substance on earth. The primary raw material in cement manufacture is limestone. Okay. We also need some silica, which is just like sand on the beach. It just so happens that we have two grades of limestone that we're mining here. One is very high in calcium carbonate, which is limestone, and another which is more gray that has a lot of silica in it. So we mine the high-grade limestone and the mid-grade limestone, and then we get the limestone and the silica that we need to start the manufacturing process. All right, and when you're mining, I, the side of the hills look like, it's like a big ladder on the side of the hills. Is that how you mine? <laughs> That's right, it's called a bench mine. So mm -hmm. we're not burrowing underground, we're making benches that are about 40 or 50 feet high and about the same depth. 
we have to blast the rock out of those benches. It doesn't just fall off of there and you can't just scrape it out. <laughs> so we put explosives in holes and blast them out of there. Now we don't want to blast the rock into the sky. We don't want it flying all over the place. All we're trying to do is fracture and collapse the rock into big piles. Then we can scoop it up with a loader, put it into a big truck and bring it over to our crusher and into the manufacturing facility. Now are we blasting today? We probably have already blasted today. <laughs> Most days we are blasting, four or five days a week. So tell us, David, what happens to the hills when you're done mining them? Well, we've pulled the limestone off of the side of the hills, and so it doesn't look like the background, and it doesn't have the plants that the animals and the vegetation there likes to live in. We've got to put it back together. There are requirements to revegetate or restore the habitat. We go a step further to really completely restore everything that we found it as. I said, now David, this is where the tires come in, right? Oh, we have several steps to go before we get to the tires. Let's get going. All right. <laughs> David, you ever feel small in the world? Sometimes when I'm looking up at the sky and sometimes looking up at these <laughs> trucks. This is a 100 ton haul truck. And when I say 100 tons, the vehicle weighs about 100 tons and it holds about 100 tons. Wow. So when it's coming fully loaded down the hill, you got about 200 tons and that's why they get the right of way. It's a little <laughs> harder to stop them than it is normal vehicles. This is, these tires are, are what? About eight feet tall. Eight feet tall. Ugh. Wow! So, uh, is it time for me to drive this off then? Uh, you need a lot of training before you can drive one of those vehicles. <laughs> you should have seen the look on his face, like, you serious, Joel? No. <laughs> All right, David, what is this big other machine over here? That's a mobile <laughs> drill rig, and that's how we drill the holes for blasting. We get an area that we know we like, like the limestone, and we drill about a dozen holes, six inches wide, about 50 feet deep. Wow. Uh, then we'll put a blasting cap at the bottom of the hole, fill the rest of it up with an explosive mixture, and, and the last 10 <laughs> feet with dirt to keep it all contained. All of it is detonation cord uh, coordinated, so it all goes off at once. So now we're ready to learn about the tires, right? We've got a few steps to go, so let's go look at how the rest of it comes together. All right, let's go. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. It takes seven gallons of crude oil to produce one car tire. So David, I see what you use the tires for now. <laughs> no, that's just a small pile of white sand. There's only a few tires there. We use a lot more tires in the process. We'll get to it. There's a few steps to go. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm good there. We have two piles now, one of each grade, and we take feed from the bottom of the pile. That's why it looks like that one's caved in a bit, because we're taking feed off the bottom of the pile oh, wow. and sending it through a third crusher where it crushes it down to under one inch side. And then we're going to mix them in the big dome that you see in the background there. Yeah, I was wondering what's in that dome. You're going to tell me, right? It's a big pile of rocks. <laughs> yeah, a big pile of rocks in the dome, huh? And that's where we mix the two and make sure we have just the right formula for our raw materials. As the show goes on, I'm feeling smaller and smaller, but louder and louder! Uh, sorry, David, I, I'm sorry about that. That's All okay. right, so we're in the dome. Yes, this is the pre-blend dome. So what is this, you said a pre-blend dome? We're blending the two kinds of limestone that we've mined in the quarry. They're coming in the upper conveyor and being stacked on this pile with the radial stacker just behind me. Mm -hmm. That pile moves towards us here, all the way around the building. So are we getting to the tires yet at all? We're getting there. We're getting there. Yep, huh? slowly but surely. So where are we heading next? Next we'll go to the, he the heart of the process, the preheating tower. The preheating tower. That's where all the ma raw materials are heated up to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's where the tires come in. Can we go? Yes, let's get there. <laughs> let's go. David, you said that the heat's at the kiln, huh? Then when well, are we gonna get to the kiln? We're almost to the kiln, but we're at the tires now. Tires! Hey! We finally made it! My goodness, there's a lot of tires here. Okay, first question, where do you get all these tires from? They come from all over Southern California. The state of California generates about 50 million waste tires each year. Wow. We use about 2 million tires per year, so there's plenty of tires. They come from everywhere that people get new tires and places that people leave old tires. 
and we have a company that brings all those tires to us and then we can use them. And we also get them from community cleanups if there's tires laying out in the desert. Now, will you get them from landfills at all? That's right. Uh, when people bring tires to landfills, they don't want to bury them there. And so they do divert the tires off to reuses, recycling, and usage like here at the cement plant. Can I ask now, what are you doing with all these tires? <laughs> We're using them as fuel and raw material. Nothing goes to waste in these tires. We drop them into the hot process. All the rubber is immediately burned off, and that adds to the heat that we need in the process. And then the steel belts drop right into the kiln and are added to the raw material so we don't have to put in quite as much iron ore. Wow. And you, and the, you use the entire tire? We use everything about it. There is no ash left over. So that's uh, my next question. It is a beautiful day, and I would be able to see if there's any black smoke coming out of here, because that's my thought is when you burn a tire, black smoke is flying out, right? It's so hot in the kiln that nothing survives it. There's no black smoke coming off of these tires, and you can see that looking at our exhaust right over there. All you see is blue oh, sky. Those, that is exhaust coming out. Now, does it matter what size tire you use? Because I, I see, like, obviously we have some small tires here, and then you have this big tire right there. Can you use any size tire? It just, uh, it has to fit through the opening that goes into our kiln feed plate. Uh, the tire you see here is just about as big as we can fit. Nothing bigger than that. So everything from the passenger tires up to the 18-wheeler truck tires we can use. How many tires will you use in a day? Because this is a lot. <laughs> This is about a four or five day supply. We typically use about four or 5,000 tires a day. So a pile like this, probably about 20,000 tires. Oh my goodness. Now how often will you have uh, truckloads come in? Whoa. They come in most days, several times a day. Oh, and nice. they unload them onto the ground and then you saw our loader scooping them up and shaping the pile and keeping it in good shape. Now he's just doing that to, to keep it moving and keep new stuff coming in. And, and right, he's shaping the pile and he's also taking bucket loads into the hopper where then it's fed onto the conveyor belt. All right, so now are we gonna go see the hopper and see how they're going in? That's our next stop. Now, we're not gonna be able to see them get burned, though, right? We'll be able to see them going in the gate. That's as far as we can see. Because <laughs> it's probably a little too hot in there, right? Right. All right, All right well, cool, let's go check it out. All right. David, what are in these cans? These are all mill balls. These are the hardened steel balls that are in the raw mill and in the finished mills. And they roll around inside the big mill container, the big steel cylinder that rolls around with these balls in there. And it grinds up first the raw materials in the raw mill and the finished product from clinker down to cement powder. Now, as they roll around, they also wear down a little bit. And so they started about three inches, a little bit bigger than this, but then they wear down to this size. <laughs> so the ones that are this size, we put back in the mill. Uh -huh. The ones that are this size, we send back to the manufacturer so they can recycle them. Clinker. Clinker's something you put on holes, like tire holes. Something that makes noise. Sound the trash truck makes. Sounds like something my car makes when it's going bad. <laughs> Some kind of substance. A clinker means a lot. I don't know. What do you think it is? What does it sound like? Uh, a wheel. Um, it sounds like blinker, maybe something in the front of your car. Blinker are little balls of cement that we then have to grind up into cement powder. All right. The rocks. The, the rock. Where are we going from here? 
from here, we're going to go to the control room to see how all this comes together. Now, before we go over to the control room, I wanted to give you a better look at the kiln. That's really the heart of the cement manufacture process. That's where it gets to the hot temperature it requires to turn the raw materials into cement. There's this kiln. It's 250 feet long and has an inside diameter of 16 feet. And it has nine inches of refractory brick that contains that very hot process inside. So the cement or the clinker is being made in that big rolling kiln. Correct. All it does is it rolls down there. It's at a slight angle. And the material just keeps pushing in and rolling around. And that mixes it. and. Uh, Closes it to a high enough temperature to make the chemical change to cement. So what in the world am I looking at here? <laughs> Lots of displays of what's going on in the plant. There's a lot going on and the production supervisors have a lot to pay attention to to keep everything running smoothly. There's dozens of different screens, but we're looking at the screen that shows the main activity through the preheater tower that we were just in mm -hmm. and the kiln. This part right here, you said this is where we just came from? Yeah, we're looking at a picture that shows the preheater and kiln system. So this area in here that I'm circling uh -huh. is where we were in the tower. It's a series of vessels where our raw material is contacted with hot air and it heats it. Each one of these vessels that we were next to in the tower looks like this vessel here. Both the hot gases and the raw materials enter in the side, swirl around inside, the hot gases exit the top to go to the next station, the next level, and the materials are heated up some and drop down to the next one. And as the materials drop through, they're heating all the way up to about 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. We do that by burning coal in two places. One is here near the bottom of the tower and the hot gases are circulating back through here. At the other side or the nose of the kiln, we also are burning coal here to heat the kiln up to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit so that we can make that chemical transformation. The tires, as we saw, are dropping right in here at the bottom of the tower, right on the feed plate going into the kiln. So they get a chance to burn up here and add to the energy going up in the preheater tower. And the steel belts are dropping in with the raw materials right at the beginning of the kiln. And now, and I see, uh, like on some of these screens right here, I see the tires, this is where the tires are actually making their, their drop in, right? Yes. All right. And then uh, over here, the big old flame. <laughs> yes, we have two cameras looking at high temperature locations. The one on the left here is actually the coal flame at the nose of the kiln. So we're watching to make sure that that looks like a nice uniform flame. Mm -hmm. And on the right is looking at the hot clinker dropping into the clinker cooler. Mm -hmm. So it's very hot, dropping out of the kiln at 2800 degrees into the first stage of cooling. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. In 2001, 38 states banned the landfilling of whole tires and 11 states banned all scrap tires from landfills. All right, David, so once the clinker is cooled, and where do you store it? We store it in these three big silos behind us. Each one of them holds about 40,000 tons of cement clinker. Wow, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. 40,000 tons. Each, so between the three of them, it's 120,000 tons of clinker storage. So now is it powder yet? Is it cement yet? No, it's still little, little rocks. Little tiny clinker rocks. Little, right? little rocks. And as you need them to create cement, you'll pull them from here. Right, we pull them for storage and bring them to the finish mills, finish. where we grind them up into a fine powder, which is the cement. Wow. Now, you do have it in, do you have it in the balls in, in here? In the finish mills. And that's where the big silver balls are you're telling me about. The hardened steel balls. Hardened steel balls. Big silver balls. Hardened steel, big silver. All right, whatever. All right, so this is the big silos. Well, how do you get it in here? From the top? It goes in from the conveyors on the top. Drops in, and then we extract it from reclaimed conveyors on the bottom. Wow. So nobody's in there shoveling clinker. You out. wouldn't want to be inside. Oh, no. No. Why? Because it's full of clinker. Oh, okay. It's from the ground up. It's yeah, full. it's full. Wow, just like a water bottle. Well, Except or, it's clinker. Or it's a clinker bottle. All right. Thank you. 
So what are these big pokey turning things? Those are our finish mills. And that's where I was saying the clinker is ground into a fine powder, which is the cement product. So it goes in as clinker rocks, and it rolls around with those hardened steel balls. Oh, this and is get, where they're at. That's right, they're inside. Oh. And it grinds up the clinker balls into a very fine powder. We also add some gypsum, which is calcium sulfate, and that allows it a little time before the concrete will set up and be hard. Gives it time to work with it. So how many of those, those balls are in there busting up the rocks? Thousands. Thousands? Yeah. Wow, how, this is pretty big. How, how many, much cement can this make? The one we're looking at makes over 100 tons per hour. Wow! Wait so a there's a lot of powder moving through there. So, okay, so 100 tons per hour. So that big truck had in one load is 100 tons right there. Of the raw product, of the raw limestone, yes. And this thing can make 100 tons of cement in an hour. In an hour, right. Wow, so all those balls are just sitting out. I can't really hear any, any of the metal balls hitting anything. Well, it's pretty thick plating. Okay. So you wouldn't hear inside. Why, why is it pokey on the outside? Uh, those are big bolts that hold the uh, plates in place. Oh, okay. They look dangerous. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be raked across them. That's true. <laughs> now, how many of those do you have here? There are four finish mills in our site. What happens, so, so after it's done going through this, well, I guess, what do you call this, mixing process? That's finish mill. Finish mill. So once it's ground down to cement, um, what happens to all the cement? It gets air conveyed to the product silos, and then it's ready to go out in trucks and train loads. All right, now I'm curious, what is the difference between cement and concrete? One's made out of sand and one's made out of something else. Concrete would be used to possibly build buildings. Cement is what we would be walking or driving on, or using something to stick like rocks together. I don't think there is a difference, because you can walk on both and you have to plant it in with all the mixtures and all that. Concrete is more bumpy. Um, concrete is a bit harder than cement. Concrete you ride your skateboard on. You can't do that on cement? <laughs> cement, yeah, you can. <laughs> so again, <laughs> is there a difference? Oh, no. <laughs> concrete, it has rocks in it, and cement does not. The cement has wood, and the concrete has hardwood. Well, this is cement, and it has the chemical energy kind of baked into it that allows it to bond with the other constituents. You mix that with gravel and sand and water, and then the chemical change happens where it releases its energy to reform all the bonds and glue everything together tightly and come up with concrete, strong concrete. So you can't make concrete without, without cement. cement. Without cement, exactly. Without wow. cement, all you have is wet sand. <laughs> wet sand. You know, it's funny because I don't feel any of the rubber from the tires in here. I don't feel any of the steel belts in the tires in here. So it's all burned up and part of this was created by using recycled tires. That's right. It's all chemically changed and then ground to a fine powder. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Scrap tires often work their way back up to the surface of landfills after burial. All right, David, one of the things I wanted to ask you was how can the community get involved when it comes to recycling tires? Most communities have community cleanup days where you can bring your tires to a central point and they can be then forwarded by the community to an appropriate recycling facility. Uh, so check with your local communities in order to find out when and where this goes on at, right? Right. All right. And who knows, your tire may become your driveway, right? That's right. <laughs> or a part of your driveway. The, the glue to your driveway. The glue that puts the, that holds the concrete together. Well, David, thank you very much. This has been very educational. It's thank been you. a lot of fun, Joel. Appreciate it. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. Each year, motorists in the U.S. generate about one scrap tire for every man, woman, and child in the country. I want to thank David and everyone out here at the Mitsubishi Cement Corporation for teaching us how they recycle tires. And Toby, thanks for keeping us rolling on Curiosity Quest. Now, if you'd like to send us on an eco-friendly quest, go to kvcr.org, click on the Curiosity Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And your ideas could be our next quest. Now, remember, this is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. 
So I'm curious, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green and I'll see you next time. I'm tossing now, here we go, look out! Ah.